Hey everybody, welcome to the on-site edition of The Plumbing Gurus. My name's Clayton. On this channel, we're striving to save you money and keep you informed on all the proper plumbing practices. On this video here, we're gonna go through a, a radiant tube heater that we installed in a garage. It actually got replaced with a forced air heater. That's this guy right here. As you can see, it's a little old, beat up. Apparently they had it serviced last year and the guy that serviced it said, you'd be lucky to get another year or two out of this unit. So they went ahead and changed to a radiant tube heater. Uh, as you can see here, I think what I'll do is I'll start off with where this heater was before. Uh, if you look straight up there, you'll see where the electrical uh, outlet was up there, up there. That BX used to run, we ran new BX, but the old BX used to run straight down. And that vent there was the vent for this heater. And that's where this heater was before. So what we did is we just uh, rerouted the gas and the thermostat and also we had to do a little uh, rerouting of the uh, venting here for the tube heater you can see here we have uh, gas tight that's just ran there we just used uh, split ring hangers with ceiling plates and ready rod to hold to uh, support the gas line and then we just zip tied the electrical wires uh, so the uh, power and the um, <clears throat> thermostat wires we just zip tied them along the gas line here. And as you can see, we have the gas line is supported every maximum eight feet. And then we ran the gas over to the very end of the unit here, tied it in. Uh, these units, these units here are, uh, we have to follow the specs of the manufacturer. So whatever they say that we have to do, that's what we have to do. So there's no, we can't um, do, uh, how, do, how do you say that now? From our code, we can't say, okay, well, this is not allowed according to our code. If the manufacturer says that that's what we have to do, that's what we have to do. So we just follow exactly what the manufacturer specs say that we have to do, and that's how we do it. So we don't uh, go above and beyond that. We just stick to what they say we have to do. And then on the end, uh, of this unit you can uh, we weren't sure about this so what we did is we just ran the intake for the unit uh, we just ran it out uh, so we can get fresh air right from outside because um, the the owner here was saying in the winter time sometimes the doors are left closed this is a shop they're running equipment gas equipment uh, there could be fumes in here so we just made the decision no we're just going to vent it out or we're going to have fresh air coming in from outside to the unit and you'll never go wrong you'll always have proper combustion and as for the chains um you can see it's just chained up above there it's uh, between a 20 degree to a 25 degree uh what they say for optimal is 20 degree uh slope uh so that's what we have and on the bottom of these tube heaters, there's a, a line on the bottom. Uh, I think that's the weld joint, or that's, maybe that's where the most heat comes out of. Uh, so they want those at the very bottom. So you can see uh, we have them mostly aiming down. What else did we do here? We have, uh, oh, here they had, um, they had a plug-in at the end of this unit here. So what we ended up doing is we just ran the wire into a box. This is for the power, for the fan. We ran the wire to the box and that wire runs into that BX that was ran from uh, the previous unit, the previous, sorry, power box from before, as you can see there. Uh, gas is all tested. We've tested the unit, everything works. Uh, so we'll just go back over here. So we offered him a new thermostat and some people, some people just don't like change, <laughs> which is fine. Uh, so they wanted to keep this old thermostat here. Um, so which is fine. Usually we would install a digital thermostat. <clears throat> it looks nicer. It's easier to see so on and so forth. You can adjust the temperatures a little bit more fine than this one, which this one is kind of, you turn the dial and you're not, you know, you're adjusting maybe five degrees, you know, four or five degrees kind of at a time. And here they also have a switch for the unit as well. 
so we didn't have to install another switch. So if you have to go work on that, this switch here shuts it off and the power is dead to the unit. Um, Yeah, how we installed it? Chains, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So, <clears throat> well, I don't know if you could hear that, but Carson does have a mic on, I do. So he was just saying, why don't we explain uh, the sections or the process of installing one of these units. So what we did, uh, the first thing we did is we figured out where its center is gonna be. So where is this, the whole tube heater is gonna, to, is gonna land. So we found center. So we found that this line in the concrete here is center and we line that up as close as we could to center with that which is you can see it's pretty much bang on so from there we have our center then we do some measurements from down here with our tilt 20 degree tilt and we find out how far we want to be from the wall and we always follow the manufacturer's book here that tells us our uh, clearances for the back front and the bottom so we, we got to make sure that we're within those clearances, then we're good to go. So once we've uh, determined that, then we get a measurement from the first hook. And you can see the chain from the first hook from us is going straight up. So what it says is that that chain should be a certain measurement and the chain behind it has to be four inches less. That's going to give you your 20 roughly 20 degree, four inches, sorry. The one, in the, back is the one in the back is four inches longer. The one in the front is, the one in the front is shorter and the one in the back is four inches longer. Sorry, my bad. Um, so then what Carson did is he went up there, pre-drilled, as you can see, we have plywood. So we pre-drilled holes, he put these uh, hooks in and we just measured every five feet. We put the hooks in and then we do this section by section. So this first section here, the actual heater, like the burner assembly here on its own, we have to mount that to this first tube. And this tube with the housing goes up and we put the hooks on either side. We hook the chains up from the hooks, drop them down, and then we hook the chains up to the, uh, uh, hooks on the actual housing shroud of itself. And we just fall, let it sit, and that's it. And then we just carry that procedure on and on and so forth for the next the four. Next and then, yeah, so once we've got that, then we move on to the next. <laughs> There's a bird up there, yeah. And so we move on to the next, we hang the shroud first, and then we slide the tube in to the shroud then the coupling there is going to hold the, uh, this is going to create a seal for the tube. And then we just follow that procedure for each one right to the very end. <clears throat> and then to the end, we've had kind of an issue here with adapting to the tube. So, cause they didn't give us an adapter. So we had to, um, use a little bit of, plumbing engineering, <laughs> but we got it to work. So we were able to get our uh, receiver. Now that's 26 gauge, Kirsten? Yeah, no, 28. 28 gauge. So yeah, we use 28 gauge for the, for the vent part of the, uh, uh, of the, from the tube off. So that's what's venting it because that's gonna be hot flue gases coming out of there. Yeah. So, and then we obviously, we just screwed. Uh, some people might ask why, are, why isn't there tape around those joints? You're not allowed to put tape around those joints because the tape will just burn off. And uh, we, I think we put a little bit of slope on that uh, vent to go straight up through the roof. That vent through there was already existing from before. So yeah, uh, this took us about a full day to do. Uh, we started at, Karsten got here at 11. So for install, before that I was taking, I took this Resiner uh, old heater down uh, by the time Carson got here, it was 11 o'clock. That's when we got started. Right now it's five o'clock, so about six hours to do it for two guys, if you guys are wondering, uh, if you guys are looking for install time. That's kind of pretty, everything, going, everything went pretty smooth for us. 
we had to thread the pipe, so we had the threader set up. Carson had the gas pipe here set up and everything. Uh, so we weren't really scattered being like, oh, we got to run into town for that or whatever, because we are just on the outskirts of Calgary right now. So, uh, so yeah, I think, I think that's pretty much it. Um, if you guys got any comments or any suggestions, or if you guys do two Peters and you're like, hey, like, why don't you do this? Or cool, I learned something uh, about doing that or whatever. Uh, leave us a comment below. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us today. Thanks a lot for watching the video. And we'll see you on the next one.